Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, getting back to work on this. Uh, when we left off, I had put some coolant in the system after buttoning everything up except for the upper intake manifold. I let it sit overnight, everything at the thermostat housing and overflow looks to be good, no signs of leaking there. Um, I did find a little bit on the hose that comes off of the water pump right there, so I tightened that clamp up. Uh, it was loose, so. Uh, should be good to go after that. It looks like that's where it was seeping out of. I could follow the uh, trail. So what I'm going to do next is get the upper intake reinstalled, um, get everything completely buttoned up, and then I can fully top off the cooling system because I do still have the two hoses that go to the throttle body uh, loose there. So that's why I didn't want it, or not hooked up. So that's why I didn't want to fill it up all the way. So uh, once I get it filled up all the way, I can go ahead and get this thing fired up and check it officially for leaks once it's all under pressure and hopefully we are good to go as far as the cooling system goes so i'm going to go ahead and get to work on getting the upper intake installed all right well as you can see everything is back together on the engine um, i just had it running uh, ran it for a good five ten minutes got it nice and hot to the point where the fan kicked on uh, no leaks that I found. Uh, everything looks to be dry everywhere. Uh, the heater, I turned it on. It's working perfectly as uh, needed. Uh, blown out nice hot air. When it's turned off, it closes up. Nothing comes out of it, so the valve is uh, closing as it's supposed to. Um, you know, Everything looks dry as far as the hose going into the heater core. Uh, checked out everything here. I don't see any drip underneath the vehicle, so that's a good sign. Everything looks to be good and dry under here and not leaving any puddles. That's a plus. Um, only thing I noticed is the temperature gauge. It's the factory Mustang gauge that is, uh, you know, just adjust or modified to fit. It never moved above that mark right there. Uh, you can see it. Uh, and this is with the vehicle turned off. It's still staying there. Um, I'm thinking that gauge, something's wrong with it or whatnot. It does go all the way down when you turn it back on and it's cool, but it never goes past that point. Uh, so I think one of the first gauges I'll probably buy for the conversion from auto meter is going to be the water temperature gauge. I might, take, might get that one sooner rather than later and at least get that swapped in just so I have a accurate idea of what the temperature is in this thing as it's running. So um, so yeah, so that's good. I haven't touched anything with the brake shed. I still do need to mess with the passenger front caliper, but glad to hear this thing is running again. Um, I do still need to adjust the timing. I could tell at first when I started it, it was not happy to be running. Uh, just kind of loosened up the hold down bolt and adjusted it accordingly. So, uh, or adjusted it to where it would run at least decently. Um, also, you know, the battery, what I ended up doing this thing's got an oversized battery in it. I flipped the tray upside down, which I know I'll still have to do something to anchor it side to side to make sure it doesn't slide out of there, but I was able to tighten it up pretty good. I did have to cut the uh, the threaded rods too. You can see they're, they're still pretty close to the diff cover. So I'll probably still have to make some adjustments there for clearance purposes, but uh, coming along, um, I'll, uh, I'll have to put some weight on the axle or, or put a jack under the axle so there's weight on it just to kind of see how close I really am with that diff cover and that battery tray box. I may need to do some more with it. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So, uh, cause like I said, it is pretty close here. I know eventually I'll get rid of these quad shocks and put actual coilovers in it right now. It's just, uh, not in the budget. I'm just trying to get the thing on the road at this point in time. So, uh, more to come. I think I'm going to wrap up for today. Uh, then I'll probably start with the brake stuff on the next video. All right, next day, time for a little update. Um, came out today, checked the cooling system, the, the reservoir, um, down a little bit from it being topped off yesterday. Uh, looked around the top of the water pump and in you know, the little pockets uh, and the timing cover and whatnot, I did see a little bit of coolant sitting in this side right here underneath the tank and the other side. I um, think it might have been just a tiny little bit of runoff seepage from the thermostat housing. I was able to put a little bit more uh, snugness on the two bolts. So tighten those up. I'm going to monitor that, uh, see what happens. Um, I'm not going to run it today. Maybe I'll run it tomorrow and see what happens there. Uh, brake leak on the right front caliper. Went ahead, pulled the line off, pulled the caliper back out. 
replaced the two ceiling washers. Um, I had copper ones on there before. Um, had some spares laying around. I grabbed a pair of aluminum ones. Threw those on there, uh, bled this caliper, put a ton of pressure on it, pumping the brake pedal. So far it's dry. So knock on wood, maybe this is finally fixed. Um, I'll let it sit overnight, check it again tomorrow and see where we're at there. So uh, a couple things, possibly, hopefully, maybe knocked off the list. We'll see. Um, I think next on the list, I need to go mess around with the battery tray try and get that just to make sure that uh, the battery won't slide side to side since I no longer have the uh, kick up of the base of the pan since the battery is too big for the pan that's in the car. So uh, I think that's the next thing I'm going to work on. All right, so it's next day. Um, don't have a whole lot of time to work on it today, so I basically have three things on my list that I want to check out. Uh, first, going to inspect all of the brakes again. Um, I you know, replaced those washers yesterday. Uh, so I want to make sure that caliper is not leaking anymore. So hopefully that will be job done on the brakes. Uh, second, as far as the battery goes, uh, did some research online last night, um, was reading around, and this seems to be a common issue if you put the uh, girdle style rear end covers that you know I have on, there's not enough clearance for the battery tray. Um, you know, there could be some options for a drop tray, maybe move it over to the side and whatnot. Um, I was thinking about it, um, you know, being that this has already got the hole cut in the floor where it is, I don't want to have to basically tear all that sheet metal out and redo it. My thought is I'll just leave that, you know, access panel where it's at, put the, you know, put the cover on it, and then I'm probably going to mount the battery inside the trunk area over on the passenger side, uh, as you can see right there. Uh, there's a good spot for it there. And, you know, it'll help with balance and whatnot. So I think that's probably going to be the best spot to put it. Um, so I'm going to measure everything up as far as the battery goes and then go online, see if I can find uh, a good hold down tray that'll work with the battery I have. And then I'll just relocate it there to the trunk. Uh, last thing I'm going to do is I want to get this thing running. Uh, still just working on making sure there's no coolant leaks or whatnot. I did tighten up the thermostat yesterday. Uh, I'd want to run it and uh, check, make sure that it stays dry, doesn't leak, because I did get the first gauge that I want to replace. I ordered a mechanical autometer Cobra style gauge, as you can see right there, because those are the gauges I do plan on installing in the car. I looked into the Smith's gauges. They're just really pricey, and there's all the worries about reliability and whatnot. I mean, anybody who looks at this car is going to be able to tell it's a factory five and not an original. So I figure I might as well go with the uh, auto meter. It's close enough. So, so yeah, so that's where I'm at today. Um, I'm going to get to work on the few things that I wanted to get done and uh, see how things turn out. All right, good news. I uh, just went around the entire car after pumping the brakes probably a good 30, 40 times, holding good pressure in the system, getting the pedal nice and rock hard, checked everything, and it is dry everywhere. Uh, I think I'm finally past fixing brake leaks. So that is great news, very happy about that. Uh, so that's off the list. Uh, I still just need to go under the dash and adjust the master cylinder push rod, make sure the end play is correct on that. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and do a final bleed and then I can hook up the e-brake cables to the handle get those adjusted properly, and brakes will be complete. No more messing with brakes. Um, as you can see here, this is what I was talking about as far as the clearance goes with the battery tray. Um, you can see that, you know, those studs, I've actually already cut those down, and they're still pretty close to that, and I really can't cut them too much more because I'd never be able to get the tray on to get the battery out. So um, that's why I'm thinking this is not going to work. Uh, I need to just cut my losses and go ahead and mount the battery elsewhere, um, you know, up to it under the trunk floor. I mean, there's a, a nice cross brace under here that you can kind of see, and I should have access to it and whatnot. So I should be able to bolt a tray to that and be good to go. So that I think is me my plan. Just need now to measure the battery and get that figured out. All right, so before I started it, I did check and there was fresh coolant sitting on top of the water pump timing housing um, and I had mopped it up yesterday and cleaned it all up and dried it out. So it is still seeping a little bit from the thermostat housing. So uh, I did just run it just because I wanted to. 
um, you know, ran fine, fired right up. There's no other leaks that I'm seeing anywhere. Everything else seems to be pretty good. It's just that thermostat housing, which again, had a feeling because the GT40 intake, the flange where it mounts was a little bit pitted. I mean, in this, this is that CSR racing one that just uses an O-ring and pressure to seal it. So I um, think I'm going to have to pull the housing off. And even though it's got the O-ring gimmick, just go ahead and great stuff it on. Um, I think that's really going to be my only way to keep this thing from leaking. That stuff, that sealer is wonderful. I've never had a problem with it. It always holds up well. So I think that's going to be the plan of attack for that. Pull the thermostat housing off, seal it up with great stuff, put it back together and be done with it. So uh, on that, I think I'm going to end this video now. Enough droning on. Uh, hope you enjoy what you're watching. If you do, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Still a lot more to come on this car. Thank you for watching and have a great day.